It's kind of interesting. I, I sometimes um, am amazed at how um, Joyce will lead right into my subject, and uh, we never we never talk or discuss uh, what she's going to say or what I'm going to say, and uh, I, I, she she's probably not like me because many times I don't really know just exactly what I'm going to say when I get up here. I, I a lot of times do know what scripture I'm going to use. Most of the time I know what scripture I'm going to use. But um, but the, the thing that I want you to think about for a few minutes this morning uh, is that too many times uh, we, we get this idea that things just happen. They just happen, you know. But I, I think probably that if you really put everything in perspective, we would find that, that God has a, a huge plan and that we see very little of it. Uh, we, we, we many times, uh, it, it used to be quite a common thing whenever I was in the business world of talking about the big picture. You know, we're talking about the big picture. We only see, you know, you're, you're just seeing a little bit of it. We're, we're looking at the big picture. Well, uh, when, when you start thinking about what we are in the eyes of God, we're, we're pretty small. Um, I, I, um, I, I thought, and I'll pick on Bart here just a minute. I think of Bart as being a pilot, and every once in a while, Bart, I think, I, I wonder when he's up there flying, you know, he can't possibly see us down here, you know. I mean, he's so high up there above, we're just a little speck down there. And I'm, I'm sure that's true, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, we're still just the same size as that we are, but even though he's way off up there and, and he can't see us, well, God has a totally different view. You know, he's, he's able for however reason to be able to see every single one of us and he knows every single one of us. See, I, I, I just have such an idea of God that it's, it's probably indescribable because I, I can't even begin to put into words how big I think he is and yet how he can look down to the very smallest of us and see us uh, and knows exactly where every single one of us are at any, any given point in time in our lives. And I don't believe that things just happen in our lives. I think there is a purpose in our lives. We may not always understand. You all have heard me say many times, I, I believe the Word of God because it is His Word. I don't understand it all. I, know, I make no pretense about that. I, I don't understand all of His Word. But I know it is His Word, and I believe it because it is His Word. And I know according to His Word that it's going to be fulfilled to a jot and to a tittle. And when I look around and I see all the things that are going on today, just as Lily was mentioning earlier in the beginning of the song, Jesus is coming soon. Now, what is soon? I don't know what soon is. You know, to some of you that might be 15 minutes, and for some of you it might be 15 years. Uh, and for some of you, that if I were to say, you know, I've got about 15 minutes left, you're going to think that's eternity. But that's about what I've got, you know. Anyway, uh, uh, but, but, you know, sometimes we just need to understand that God is fulfilling His Word and His work as you and I are here this morning. And He has a purpose in every single one of you being right here where you are today. I believe that. With everything that I believe he has a purpose in my being here. I sometimes wonder about that. I truly do. I, I, and, and as much as I believe the word of the Lord, there are some things that are just hard for me to understand and to accept. And I, you all heard me tell the story about when, when, when Shirley and I were probably going through one of the toughest times in our lives financially. Her mother used to come by the house every once in a while, and, I, and you know, I'd just be lowering a snake's belly. And everything's going fine with her. She's doing great, you know, everything's going okay. And as she would go whizzing out the door, she'd say, Now kids, just remember, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and those who are called according to His purpose. Head on out. And that just make me so mad I couldn't see. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Well, how come they're not working good for me right now, you know? I, was just, I said a few more things, so. Uh, <laughs> but let me tell you something. It was hard for me to understand how all things were working good to good. There, there were some lessons for me to learn out of that, and I did learn some lessons out of it. It was not a pleasant experience, and it still isn't today, and I don't talk much about it. 
accepting just to remind each of us, the Bible says all things work, not some of them. You see, I like, I like to talk about those things that have been good and have been pleasant and enjoyable in my life and the blessings that the Lord has given me. I don't like to talk very much about all the times whenever that I've been tested and I've been tried right up to the nth degree. That's kind of tough. All things work together to good to them that love the Lord. Not some of them, but all of them. See, that's hard for me to understand. Because I see some things in life and I see some things in my own life that I can't understand how that's going to work to good. I look at other people many times and, and, and I listen to other people and, and, and I share some of, their, some of their hurts and some of their sorrows and, and I listen to them and, and sometimes I think, Lord, how in the world can any good come out of this? How, how can there be any good come out of it? But God knows. I want to share with you from the Word of the Lord this morning just how sometimes this works. In the Word of the Lord, and, and what I want you to understand is God's Word is going to be fulfilled, He said, to a jot and to a tittle. And it will be. I have no doubt about that. And from time to time in His Word, He shows us how that He fulfills and He carries out what He said He would do. You see, God makes many promises to each one of us as one of His children. But many of the promises which are made unto us are conditional promises. And you need to remember that whenever you begin to spout all the, the promises of God and everything that, that you like to talk about, remember that most of them are conditional. God, all down through time, has usually conditioned the promises that He's made on us doing something or not doing something, whichever the case may be. All those promises that God made to the children of Israel, whenever that He was making the promise to them, He also conditioned those promises. He said, providing you do this, that you remain faithful to me, that you stay true to me, that you follow me, that you do what I say in my word. And if you don't do them, then I'm not going to bless you. God does not bless sin. And you need to remember that. God does not bless sin. God is not the author of sin. God does not bless sin. God blesses us whenever that we are obedient unto Him and whenever we're doing His will. But whenever that we transgress and we don't obey Him, He's not going to bless us. Now people say, well, I'm blessed all the time. Well, you're missing out on some blessings, I'll guarantee you. Every single one of us are. Anyway, in the Word of the Lord, there's a couple of old boys, and they're, they're, they're big shots. They're kings, and they get together, and they've decided that it's time for them to go out and conquer another country. They're going to go out, and they're going to conquer some of the Syrians' country. And so these two guys get together, Ahab and Jehoshaphat, who's the king of Judah, and they get together and say, you know what, it's time for us to go down there and to take on the Syrians and take back this land. And as they're talking about it, they decide, you know what, maybe we better do, we better get some advice. And sometimes we need advice in our lives. Sometimes we need to hear somebody else's opinion. There are some times I don't want somebody else's opinion, but I need it anyway. Sometimes I need to be set straight. I miss out on Shirley. Shirley was always my best critic, and I could always count on her. I always knew she was going to be honest with me, sometimes to the point that it hurt, and sometimes it made me angry, and sometimes it was upsetting to me. And she would tell me every once in a while, you need to be watching. She'd say, you know what, you're spending way too much time in between your words. Yeah. And I'd say, well, okay, I can speed it up a little bit and I'll preach a little faster, I'll talk a little more. And then she'd tell me, you know what, if you can't get it all said in 15 or 20 minutes, it isn't worth saying. You don't need to be taking all that time. I'd say, well, sometimes I just can't get through in 15 minutes. I'm only giving you some of the life things. And of course, you know I loved her and I loved and appreciated. But she was honest not only with things like that. I would say she was honest with me things that I'm not going to tell you about. Yeah. Sometimes we need someone else's opinion. So Ahab and Jehoshaphat, they decided, well, we better call in the prophets and ask them what they say. So they called them all in, and these were all guys who, who were prophets of, of Baals and other gods. And so they called them in and said, well, what should we do? Should we go down there and fight against the Syrians? They said, oh, yeah, yeah, you go down there, you know, you're going to win the battle. And so they were all excited about this. And so finally Ahab said, you know what? I'd like to have one more opinion. I'd like to have an opinion of a man of God. 
And, and, and uh, so they, they sent for, for another person. They called him in. And, and before he got there, he was prompted on what he was to say. Now, sometimes we get in our minds exactly. How, how, don't put your hands up. I don't want to see any hands. How many of you here, though, have been in a situation or are going to be in a situation where you thought beforehand, I need to get my thoughts together exactly as to what I'm going to say? I'm, I, I'll, I, know, I know what I'm going to say when I get there or when I see this person or whatever. I, I, I know what I'm going to say. Or if I were to say, well, listen, I want one of you to get up here next Sunday morning. You'd say, well, I better be thinking about what I'm going to say. And then when the time comes, you can't remember diddly squat about what you were going to say. I only say about half of what you thought you were going to, and that turns out to be just almost contrary to what you meant to get across anyway. Yeah, I, I've been down that road a lot of times. I see a few of you shaking your heads like maybe you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, they prompted this old prophet and said, now listen, when you go in there, what they want to hear is that you're going to give them approval to go out there and fight. And the old prophet says, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there and tell them just exactly what I think the Lord told me, or what, what I believe what the Lord told me to tell them. So he goes in there, and he tells them, and he says, uh, they ask him if they should go and fight the battle. Yeah, go ahead. And, and uh, the old prophet, then Ahab says, I told you, I knew this is what you do. He'll come in here and lie to us. He lied to me. He said, every time he ever sells me anything, it's trouble for me. And let me tell you something. There are going to be some troubles in your life. You all are old enough to know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. There's not a single one of you here that haven't been through those experiences in your life. And so you know what I'm talking about. And we're only kidding ourselves whenever we think that God isn't involved in this because He is many times. We may not think so. He knows what's going on in our hearts and in our lives. So Ahab, he says, you know what? He says, I knew what he was going to say when he came in here. Anyway, they finally, they decide they're going to go down there and fight the battle anyway. Even though Ahab has already heard now, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not going to be successful. Here's what he says. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel, this is Ahab, said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. But put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. Now, they're the, so you know, back in those days, it wasn't like it is today. We've got all these people up here in Washington who are always ready to send all of our young, the best we have, the crop of the world, in here to fight our battles. But do you think they're going to go out there and lead the battle? Not on your life. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if that was the situation it was in the olden days, they'd probably be a lot more thought given to when we're going to fight and when we're not, and what we're fighting for and what we're not. Now, you can just take that for whatever it's worth. And I don't care who it is, which party we're talking about. I'm saying this morning that if those people who are making those decisions were the one who had to go out there and execute the decisions, we'd probably see some different decisions from time to time. But we send the best we have, and we still are today. I'm going to tell you this morning, I have no reservations whatsoever about standing here or anywhere else and telling you that whenever you begin to talk about the military of the United States of America, you're looking at some of the best people that we have. And we have gone through and handpicked them and selected them out, and they're out there serving you and me. Well, anyway, Ahab and Jehoshaphat, as was customary, are going to lead their troops into battle. But Ahab says, I want to, I want to disguise myself. I don't even know who I am. And Jehoshaphat, for whatever reason, he says, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go out there. And I'll wear my robes and everything. Now listen. But the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. King of Syria said, hey, we're after one person when we go out there to fight. We don't want, yeah, we're, not, we're not concerned about the rank and file. We want the king of Israel. 
That's who he commanded his 32 captains to be looking for, is to look for Ahab. Now remember, Ahab has disguised himself. Man, I've got to hurry. I, I, my, I've just got about two minutes left. Uh, anyway, and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursu pursuing him. And a certain man, I want you, this is what I want you to hear. This is what I think is so exciting and interesting is, is to how God works many times. Just unbelievable to us. Now keep in mind what's happened. They're out here and they're in the battle. And they've started after Jehoshaphat, thinking this is Ahab. Whenever they get out here and they're getting cornered, Jehoshaphat reveals himself and says, Whoa, I'm not the one you're looking for. And so they back off. They're looking for Ahab. That's who they're after. And there's another reason why that Ahab is the one they're going to be looking for here. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore, he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thou thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Ahab's out here, and he's disguised. And so far, he's been able to escape from the Syrians. But there's some old boy who's standing out here in the field. And he takes and he draws back a bow, shoots an arrow into the air, has no idea as to what he's shooting at us up in the air. But I'll guarantee you that God directed that arrow to the spot that he wanted it to go. And it went right into the body of Ahab. Yeah. It wasn't the Syrians who got Ahab. It wasn't somebody who had deliberately got him in their sights and done it. It was some old boy that he had no idea how he was carrying out what the Lord had promised was going to happen unto Ahab. He had no idea that God was using him to accomplish God's work. And Ahab had no idea that someone standing out here would shoot an arrow into the air and it would find its mark. The things just happened. Was it by accident that this old boy did this? No. Listen. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. Ahab stays out here as the battle goes on through the rest of the day, and he dies in his chariot. While he's holding on to life, his blood is eking out and pouring down into the chariot. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Listen. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, every man to his city and every man to his own country. They're going, they're going home now. Battle's over. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. It's not over. Not over. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord which he spake. The old prophet Elijah had prophesied before this ever took place that Jezebel would be killed, and that the blood of Ahab would be licked up by the dogs. Oh, he's the king, people. He's a man of power. But here, it's carried out. 
It's a little insignificant thing that most of the time as you read over it, you just read over it and say, oh, wait a minute, well, that is interesting. But let me tell you something this morning. God is going to see that his work is carried out. He's going to see that the job is done. And all I can hope, Ronnie, is, is that you and I have one little part in that along the way that we can say that God entrusted us, not just me and you, but all of us, to do his work and to carry out his work. And when we do that, we do our little part, as insignificant as we may be. You know what? This old boy, so far as I know, who drew, who drew that arrow and shot him, isn't even mentioned by name. I don't know who, what his name was. Where he went, I don't know. Where did he come from? I don't know. What did he have in mind when he shot? I don't know. Doesn't say. There are many things in life I do not understand. But I believe God has a plan for every single one of us and it's working. It's working right along and it will be carried out to a jot and to a tittle.